Inside the turmoil of China's stock market, root causes exposed. The central document number one reveals state secrets in one sentence, unveiling the grim situation of the rural economy. China's largest paper-making giant reports first annual loss, debt ratio soars to 72%. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Inside the turmoil of China's stock market, root causes exposed. Entering 2024, China's A shares experienced a significant decline, with over 5,200 stocks in Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Beijing falling, resulting in a market value drop of over 60% since its peak in 2021, amounting to nearly 2 trillion US dollars. The Shanghai Composite Index plummeted to 2,655.09 points causing distress among investors as more than 2,000 company stocks approached their lower limits. Shareholders expressed anger and frustration, calling for accountability and resignations from officials. When the Shanghai, Shenzhen and Beijing stock markets fell across the board on February 5, Taiwan's stock market returned to the 10,000 mark, with a transaction value of 327.725 billion new Taiwan dollars approximately 10.5 billion US dollars. The root cause of the stark difference between the CCP stock market and Taiwan's lies in the fundamental economic systems they operate under. Taiwan embraces a genuine free market economy where market forces dictate resource allocation. Conversely, the CCP operates within a power economy where political influence determines resource allocation, characterized by opaque and unjust practices. The CCP's interference in the stock market, exemplified by its ability to manipulate information akin to peeking at cards in a casino, undermines investor confidence. Initially established not to promote fair market participation but rather to bail out state-owned enterprises and banks, the stock market serves as a tool for the party's financial gains. The CCP's pervasive control extends into all facets of the stock market, enabling it to manipulate outcomes to its advantage, even at the expense of investors' interests. The fear of economic prosperity leading to demands for political and social freedoms prompts the CCP to engage in tactics like elimination of liquidity, restricting selling and coercing investment in government bonds. The CCP's multifaceted role as regulator, influencer, and participant violates the principles of a free and fair market, eroding trust and precipitating a crisis of confidence. Xi Jinping's consolidation of power into totalitarianism exacerbates this economic and political tension, leading to deepening crises across various sectors. As economic, political, and social crises intersect, the erosion of confidence may culminate in the collapse of the CCP's totalitarian regime. The central document number one reveals state secrets in one sentence, unveiling the grim situation of the rural economy. On February 3, 2024, the central document number one released, unintentionally leaked state secrets, revealing the dire state of the rural economy. This document, the 12th guiding agricultural policy since the 18th National Congress of the CCP, introduced initiatives to revitalize rural areas through the Thousand Villages Demonstration, 10,000 Villages Improvement Project. However, this project, initiated by Xi Jinping during his tenure as the CCP Zhujiang Provincial Committee Secretary in 2003, has been criticized for its ineffective approach. The document aimed to ensure national food security and prevent widespread poverty while emphasizing the importance of technological advancement and reform in driving rural development. However, critics argue that past efforts focused on exaggerated poverty alleviation schemes, leading to a resurgence of poverty on a larger scale. Experts like Jonathan Liu highlight the stark reality of rural poverty exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, with many farmers facing financial hardship due to a stagnant economy and dwindling opportunities for income. Additionally, concerns arise regarding food security, as China's reported grain production figures are inflated, necessitating significant imports. The Thousand Villages Demonstration, 10,000 Villages Improvement Project, launched in Zhujiang Province in 2003 under Xi Jinping's leadership, aimed to improve rural living standards and environmental conditions. However, critics like Li Yuanhua argue that such initiatives lack comparability across regions due to differing socioeconomic and environmental factors. 
Jonathan Liu contends that the project fails to address fundamental issues in agriculture and rural development. He emphasizes the role of migrant labor in supplementing rural incomes and criticizes the CCP's control over grain prices, hindering farmers' ability to earn a decent living. Despite the government's emphasis on party leadership in rural affairs, critics like Li Yuanhua question the efficacy of such top-down directives, arguing that other countries operate without party interference, allowing for more effective agricultural practices. Jonathan Liu highlights the pervasive corruption within the CCP, suggesting that decades of mismanagement have led to systemic decay. He doubts the effectiveness of official directives in combating poverty, suggesting that bureaucratic self-interest undermines efforts to revitalize agriculture and rural communities. China's largest papermaking giant reports first annual loss, debt ratio soars to 72%. In 2023, China's leading paper giant, Qinming Paper, grappled with unprecedented challenges, marking its first annual loss since its inception. The company's debt ratio surged to 72%, reflecting the strain of a sluggish domestic market. Qinming Paper predicts losses of up to 1.3 billion yuan, around 183 million US dollars, for the year, attributing the downturn to a combination of dwindling demand and soaring raw material costs particularly in the realm of machine-made paper, notably white cardboard. Despite its historical profitability since going public in 2000, the onslaught of consecutive years of epidemic crises finally took its toll on Qinming Paper's financial standing. The downturn was further underscored by dismal quarterly performances throughout 2023, where revenue, net profit, and non-net profit all witnessed stark declines. Even in the fourth quarter, the losses aggravated, signaling a worrying trend for the company's financial health. Additionally, Qinming Paper's asset liability ratio ballooned to 72.98% by September 2023, reflecting mounting financial pressures. Consequently, the company halted cash dividend distributions for two consecutive years, in 2021 and 2022. To cope with these challenges, Qinming Paper has undertaken various measures, including divesting non-core businesses, closing down unprofitable enterprises, and reducing the scale of its financial leasing business. Beyond Qinming Paper, the broader papermaking landscape in China appears similarly beleaguered, with other industry stalwarts like Sun Paper and Shanying International also reporting declines in net profits or incurring losses. This collective struggle underscores the systemic challenges facing the paper industry in the wake of fluctuating market dynamics and economic uncertainties. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.